Hey guys, welcome to the Chat Cafe where real students are honest about some of the everyday issues they face. I'm Omar, your host for today, and we'll be talking about identifying true love in a healthy relationship with a few of our special guests from the One Love organization. Today, we're joined by Miss Grace Carmichael. How are you today? I'm good, thanks for having me here. So, tell us a little bit about the One Love organization and what it's all about. Yeah, so One Love was founded in 2010 in honor of Yardley Love. She was a senior at the University of Virginia who lost her life to relationship violence. So her family started the organization in 2010 originally to create awareness and conversation about the warning signs of relationship violence. Since then, we've grown, grown to be a national organization and the number one leader in healthy relationship education and prevention. So over six regional offices, including one here in Maryland, which is special because Yardley was from Baltimore and this is where her family still lives, so hometown girl. Um, we have the opportunity to work with students like yourselves, educating you all about the skills of how to talk about healthy and unhealthy relationships. So, identifying behaviors like isolation, but also teaching you guys skills like communication, both inside and outside the classroom. So why do you think we're taught very little about love? So I think love is something that's super complicated. I think that when you know, we're little, we are taught you know, what is bad, what is good. We might have that initial gut feeling of what it feels like when we're happy. We have these happy butterflies, or maybe we have that pit feeling when it's something's not so good, but the exact words of associating behaviors to actually what we're feeling hasn't really been done before. Yeah. So we've grown to be the national leader in healthy relationship education, which is really exciting on the preventative side. So when I'm teaching you guys, when you feel jealous about something, but you're not really sure what it feels like inside or what that is, we can put a word to it and a way to explain it, which is really exciting. Why do you guys think we're not taught as much about love that, as much as we'd like? Um, well, I think like, not necessarily around love, but around relationship violence. Like there's this big stigma, like talking about it and it makes people uncomfortable and they don't really wanna like share close details of their life or they might be embarrassed or like feel yeah. ashamed um, if they've ever experienced any of that. But um, it's really important to make it known and make it talked about and break the stigma. Yeah, I think it is puts people kind of in an uncomfortable situation, like talking about their feelings, like most high schoolers don't really want to have an open conversation about their feelings or their relationships. But I think um, using One Love as a platform for people to be more comfortable talking about these things um, is a really awesome thing. And I think before, people may not have been too sure where to go if they were um, feeling like trapped in a relationship or they just felt like something was off, they may not have known where to turn. So. Um, giving them the voice that we're able to give them with One Love I think is really awesome. I feel like a lot of people, relationships are new, especially in high school, um, and when we don't know how to process these feelings or we don't know the signs, um, we expect it to be almost like normal, like this is what a relationship is, this is how we work through it, but I feel like people don't have those resources, they don't know who to go to. Um, and ultimately they don't know when it's like too much. Yeah, definitely. So how, how, can we, how can we identify between a healthy relationship and an unhealthy relationship? Yeah, so I think going back to my first point about identifying that gut feeling. So in these 10 signs, we can use control and isolation as an example of unhealthy. Isolation is usually one of the number one indicators of an unhealthy or an abusive relationship. And when everybody starts dating someone new or maybe they have a new friend, you're gonna to wanna to be spending all their time with them. But all of a sudden when you start to think, hmm, you know, my friend and I used to show up to practice all the time together or we used to study after school together and then all of a sudden those behaviors start to change um, and for the negative. So we always go back to that gut feeling. If you think it's wrong or you think something is off with yourself or a friend or a loved one, use that opportunity to start that conversation. Um, the healthy just as much. So when you're enjoying something and it feels really good and it's awesome and you're happy about it, you know, using that fun as a really good example. Um, as well as making sure that we're, you know, just having an honest communication about it. The second it feels off, just talk about it. Um, but healthy is, you know, more about if you're not thinking twice about it, you're going with the flow, your friends haven't said anything to you about it, then yeah. it's usually a good sign. Do you uh, guys have? Yeah, yeah well, so um, I remember learning about manipulation um, and self-blame, and when you find that 
you're blaming all these problems and your partner is kind of turning it against you that and like you can't talk about these problems openly that's when um, those problems can't really be resolved yeah and I think you talked about discussing things openly communication which is a healthy sign mm -hmm. um, of a relationship is so key so if you feel like you can't communicate it to your partner or a friend and then you can't communicate it maybe with a parent that you trust or an adult then that's going to be a huge sign so Second, you feel like that trust is being broken or as though you can't be honest, then that's going to be a red flag. Mm -hmm. So what, has, what kind of impact has One Love made on your life so far that you guys can share with us today? Um, I mean, getting the opportunity to, in my senior year, be the president of such an amazing club has been awesome and it's opened up so many opportunities for us and just giving us a chance to really feel a part of our school community and feel like we're really helping people, um, especially because we have so many new members this year, and, and especially younger girls like freshmen and guys too. And I feel like it's really hopefully opening up the conversation in our school and just, you know, breaking that stigma like I talked about earlier. But yeah, it's really awesome. It's amazing to be co-president with you because, <laughs> well, um, before it was kind of us just being advocates, but yeah. now it's teaching other people to be advocates for one love and healthy yeah. relationships. And I think it's amazing to see other girls and guys learning the healthy signs. So many people don't know what One Love is, which shocks me. Mm -hmm. And every day when we have someone new um, being brought into the club, it's just like nice to see it growing. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Yeah. So how did you guys start a club? What made you want to do that? Because I know our, our work within the health classes, I work with the health curriculum here, and we work with eighth graders. I know you guys have hosted workshops with eighth graders. I'm using our animated couplets videos in high school. It's in the health classes, and we use our behind the post, and that's not love, and health teachers are in on it, counselors, social workers are in on it, but what made you guys actually want to start a club? Well, at our high school, Towson High School, we had like a foundation, sort of like, our One Love Club already existed and it was started by our friend, um, her name's Abby Osmeyer and she's awesome. She goes to Virginia Commonwealth University now and she plays lacrosse and she was really passionate about this and her and her mom kind of just started, decided to start this club at our school. And so last year, when we were juniors, it wasn't very big. You know, there was a few, like 10 or 15 maybe girls. Um, but this year, we talked to our um, teacher advisor, our guidance counselor, Ms. Hanley, and we decided, like, let's make this into something good because we're best friends and we wanted to make this, like, a big club, and we're both really passionate about it. So we started a social media following. We advertised our club on the announcements at school, and we talked to all our friends, and we're really encouraging them that this is something super important, and you know, it's bigger than just us. Mm -hmm. I definitely felt like I had a close connection with um, NDP, but one of the biggest um, things that like drew me in was the YouTube videos. I would just go through and like scroll and watch each and every one, and it was just such an eye opener to see all of those. Mm -hmm because it puts it in perspective. I feel like a lot of people see the signs and they're like kind of dramatic, dramatic, dramatized, dramatized, <laughs> dramatized. They're definitely dramatized and seeing them like being brought to the scale that we know, like using like social media. Um, Absolutely. It's definitely an eye opener. Yeah, I think for us, at least for me, um, what made me want to become uh, so involved in One Love is how like close it seemed, and like Yar Yarley went to NDP. I have friends that played lacrosse with her, and um, I think being part of something so big that's so close to home is awesome. And I think a lot of girls and guys that are part of our club at Hereford feel the same way. And it's awesome to see our work. And uh, as you were saying, we've been going to the middle school and teaching them about some of the signs to what to look out for, and um, talking about the story and seeing some of their faces light up when they hear the name Yardley Love or NDP because they recognize that as something that's also close to them um, and then they want to get more involved and they want to teach other people. I think that's the reason why we keep going is perpetuating our, um, our love for this foundation and what everyone does and so I think that's, that's what keeps us going. Yeah, so I didn't really know about One Love until about a year ago. Um, and I like watched your content, your videos, and that really like made me understand like, hey, like I do have friends that are in, like unhealthy relationships, but I just didn't know about it or like what to call it until I watched those videos. Um, and I actually got a chance to have an internship with One Love, and that really like opened up my eye to like what One Love is and how much we can do. 
and especially for like guys, I think that we don't really like, think about it, but like once you watch the videos, I feel like you get hooked, and like once you join the club, then like you, you're coming back. Yeah, I the totally videos agree. Were so good. Yeah. I mean, they just put it on a scale for all of us. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, because in this day and age. Yeah, I think like for me, and I can probably speak for all of us. Like, before being in One Love, I didn't really, I never thought about high school relationships like being that serious or being like it could be abusive or like mm. you know mentally like hard on girls and guys um, but now after being in One Love and being so involved with it I could definitely recognize a lot of things where you know some things might not be okay or might be going wrong and mm. you know my friends or other people like their relationships and even friendships as well. Yeah I think the videos are awesome I think um, especially the newer content with all the social media and all that stuff, it's super yeah. relatable. And I know um, the video that we show with all the health classes, when we turn the lights back up, you can see on everybody's faces, they're like, oh, like, this is real. And I think it's because they are able to connect with um, what the foundation has been able to put on the screen in front of us. And um, just that in itself, the production and everything like that is just incredible. And what it's done for, um, us and being able to show everyone the signs and what to look for on such a personal level is crazy. So how many schools are involved in One Love and like how can we get as much schools as we can involved in One Love? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as we talk about the health classes a bunch, so we're in the eighth grade health class space. Um, so you know, teachers go on to use our what we call workshops. So there are videos, everybody's talking about the videos um, that are on our website, but also on YouTube. And we have paired discussion guides and lesson plans. So we've worked with curriculum to write out these lesson plans written to the state standards where we go in and you teach people with those skills. So couplets is in all of eighth grade. And then in high school, it's with a health credit. So depending on what class year you take health, you'll be able to take one love workshops. But it's led by the teachers. And like as far as clubs in One Love and schools that are have One Love clubs in them, there's a lot in Maryland because obviously this foundation originated in Maryland because she went to, Yardley Love went to Notre Dame Prep, which is right you know 15 minutes away from us, and um, so there's a big Maryland, DC, Virginia One Love presence. I feel like, um, but also just all over, mm -hmm. all over the U.S. There's mm -hmm. a One Love presence. I, I hope in schools, um, in high schools, but yeah. Statewide, we've educated people all across the state oh, of Maryland, wow. except since we're in Maryland. <laughs> cool. How do you guys um, think that we can get as many schools to start joining um, the club and like starting it up in their schools? I think social media plays a huge role in really everything that we do these days. I think the social media pages for One Love are awesome. Um, the ones for each of the schools are really cool too because um, being like on the Hereford One Love page, we go to the Towson One Love page, mm -hmm. Delaney, we look at what they're doing, we look at like the fun things they're doing to get people involved, and just through that, then we want to do the same things, we want to get people involved, so I think the social media and um, the, just the media presence in general is, will be like a huge uh, driving force to get, like a catalyst to get um, as many schools as possible. Yeah, I totally agree with Sydney, like it is super important to, you know, just check out One Love on social media or like on their website, joinonelove.org, and you can just see what it's all about. But also, if you know your school does have a One Love club, reach out to the administrator, reach out to you know the students in it or like the presidents of the club, because it can be a really great opportunity for you to get involved in. Yeah. Or if they don't, then reach out to someone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> reach out to me. <laughs> yeah, and um, or as someone you know in your school who would be willing to reach out, and so they can start the presence in their own club because. Having as many as possible is obviously so important to get the message out there because this is real and we need to we need to get it out there. Well, we're all out of time. Thank you all for joining me today on this episode of the Chat Cafe. Stay tuned for our next episode and follow us on social media. Thank you.